Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a musical paradox, a conundrum, something that really was disturbing me. I was thinking about this. You know how I do? I started to do ideal lists again, right, of... Well, we make things up of romantic violin concertos or romantic piano concertos or classical this or operatic that, something that fits into a category, right? And I wanted to do one on romantic and contemporary piano sonatas, maybe a couple of talks. I thought, because, you know, I, I haven't been doing as much with the piano sonata as, as a form, as a medium, and it's, we all love it, and we know it, and there are some really famous works that are piano sonatas, I don't need to tell you. And I couldn't do it. I mean, I could do it. I, I could come up with some incredibly obscure list of things you've never heard of. That's not what I mean. I mean, what happened to the piano sonata? This is what really blows my mind, you know, because the classical period, you know, up until the death of, say, like, you know, Beethoven or Schubert is known as the golden age of the symphony. It was the golden age. It was the age in which the symphony became the major, most important form of orchestral music purely orchestral music. I happen to not believe it was the golden age of the symphony. I believe the golden age of the symphony is the 20th century. I mean, the late 19th and, and 20th century, and it continues. Why? Because in order to have a golden age of orchestral anything, you have to have a golden age of orchestras. And we are in the golden age of orchestras. Most symphony orchestras were founded toward the end of the 19th century, in the 1880s and 90s and forward regularly constituted modern orchestras as we understand them. And for in order for people to write symphonies, there had to be orchestras to play them. Yes, in the 19th century, there were, you know, community or, or regional orchestras or town orchestras and things like that. But if you studied this a little and you looked at how they were constituted and how they were funded and what the quality of their playing was, there weren't that many around, nor were there many symphonies in this giant sort of vast emptiness. Again, this doesn't mean that symphonies weren't written in the middle of the 19th century, but there weren't many that we care about. There really weren't. Were there in the 20th century? There's tons that we care about. I mean, think about that for a minute. It's really, really a fascinating phenomenon. I mean, the symphony is a 20th century medium in so many ways, or late 19th and then 20th century medium from the 1880s and 90s, exactly contemporary with the rise of the symphony orchestra and the improvement in performance standards. And then you had all these people writing symphonies and a lot of them are just marvelous. And many, many, many of them are part of the standard repertoire now. Whereas, you know, in the golden age of the symphony, you have Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. That's it. That's the whole shebangy. And in the middle, you get, well, Mendelssohn, Schumann, Brahms, and that's it. It's really kind of surprising. So we're in a wonderful position with respect to orchestral music. Now, you would think the same thing would be true of the piano sonata. I mean, even truer of the piano sonata because, because I mean, we had amazing, these, these insane composer pianists. We had Chopin, we had Liszt, we had Alcan, we had all these people, but they wrote so few piano sonatas. Fewer piano, I mean, Rachmaninoff, Rachmaninoff, the great pianist, Rachmaninoff, wrote fewer piano sonatas than he did symphonies. I mean, that's stunning. A stunning fact. And it's all the more fascinating when you consider that the reason, the rationale behind writing, you know, music for smaller forces is that you have a better chance of having it performed. And so I'm I'm a little bit puzzled. If you look at the 19th century, the entire 19th century, what do you see after after the death of Beethoven? You have Schubert wrote a couple that no one pays much attention to. Mendelssohn wrote a couple that nobody pays much attention to. Brahms only wrote three and he gave up and nobody considers his first or his, his second and third, his first, no one pays attention to his second and third sonatas to be his, his more significant works among them, even though they were enormously popular. I mean, Schumann, you know, had an orgasm when he first heard Brahms play his piano sonatas, but we don't pay much attention to them now. 
And think of the, the great Russian composer, Tchaikovsky. Nah, Rachmaninoff we just covered. It, it's really stunning in the 19th century. The, the piano sonata, aside from the Liszt sonata and the two Chopin sonatas, is, is it's just a wasteland. It's an absolute piano sonata desolation. And I can't figure out why. It could be maybe that the piano sonata was still a personal medium. That is, you needed to have a great composer pianist to promote it. But that still doesn't explain why the great composer pianist didn't write many of them. What prevented them from writing many of them? I, it, it's, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, the last major piano sonata writers were Beethoven and Schubert. And after that, when we get to the 20th century, well, there are composers who wrote piano sonatas. I mean, there was Scriabin. He's kind of a special case because he's Scriabin-esque, right? But there are, you know, the nine Scriabin sonatas at least. And so that's a good thing. And, you know, they're wonderful pieces. And there's, there's Prokofiev, who is really the 20th century piano sonata guy that mostly still gets played. And there are many other composers who wrote piano sonatas, but they don't get performed regularly. I mean, think of, you know, Persichetti. He wrote lots of piano sonatas. Does anyone perform them? No. I mean, now, perhaps Nikolai Kapustin has a shot at becoming the next great piano sonata composer. He wrote 20, after all, and he's a marvelous composer and writer for the piano. But even, even the ones who do get performed, the composers, they wrote one piano sonata. You know, there's the Barber piano sonata. There's the Griffiths. Copeland wrote a piano sonata. You know, they write one, and that's it. And then they churn out reams of other stuff, multi multiple copies of other stuff, but not piano sonatas. And I'm fascinated by this. I'm absolutely fascinated by this phenomenon. You know, the piano, the piano reached its essential modern form fairly early on, you know, the mid to second half of the 19th century. We had gorgeous grand pianos. It did all the things other instruments did. It was improved. The mechanism was polished up. It was made all big and shiny for modern concert halls so you could pound away on it with an, with an orchestra, with a piano concerto, for example. But for some reason, for some reason that I cannot figure out, the piano sonata seems dead, dead, dead. And I, it, that's, the, that's the question. I really don't have anything else to say about it because, because it, it, that's the question. I want you to tell me what happened to the piano sonata. Fascinating question, isn't it? It really, it really I think, is a, a head scratcher. And I need to think about it a little more, but I wanted to think about it with you all because especially some of you are pianists and I'm not, and you may have a better sense of the overall repertoire than I do. But remember what we're talking about here very, very specifically, and that's composers who write lots of them and they get performed. Just like Shostakovich wrote 15 symphonies and they get performed. Or even Prokofiev who wrote piano sonatas wrote symphonies and they get performed. Or Bernstein wrote symphonies and they get performed. Copland wrote symphonies, they get performed. Vaughn Williams wrote symphonies, they get performed. Malcolm Arnold wrote symphonies, they get performed. We talk about all these symphonists. We talk about symphonists because that's what's out there. Some of you have said things like, well, you don't pay as much attention to keyboard music. Well, this is part of the reason. What am I going to pay attention to? There's tons of keyboard music being written, don't get me wrong. Piano music galore. But large works in large forms. What is it about the piano sonata that has proven to be so difficult and so mysterious since Beethoven and Schubert's day? That's the question. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me and take care.